Good morning and a very warm welcome to our worship, our service of morning praise. We're going to begin by singing hymn 172, Fill Your Hearts with Joy and Gladness. turn to our opening responses in our orders of service. From the rising of the sun till its setting in the west, God's holy name be praised. On the lips of children by babies at the breast, God's holy name be praised. In the visions of the old, in the dreaming of the young, God's holy name be praised. In the banquet hall of heaven and the forgotten corners of our hearts, God's holy name be praised. Let all that has life and breath praise the Lord. Amen. We praise the Lord. We sit or kneel for our prayers. <coughs> We say together, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you 
and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we're going to say the Venite responsively. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. James is going to come and read our readings for us this morning. First reading is from Genesis, chapter 14, verses 17 to 20. After Abraham's return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley. And King King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine, and he was priest of God Most High, He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him one-tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from Revelations, chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Alleluia! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is 691, Thy Kingdom Come, O God.
Sue Sedan. Our Gospel reading this morning is taken from John chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and didn't know where it had come from, though the servants who'd drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk but you have kept the good wine until now. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May my spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, to Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Now my guess is that over Christmas, Some of you, like me, will have been given a gift of some wine. And our Gospel today, this story of the wedding at Cana in Galilee, is about just that. It's a wonderful story about an extravagant gift of wine. Now, you'll probably know that um, St John doesn't tell very many miracle stories. In fact, he only tells seven. Um, Most of the, the miracle stories we know come from Matthew, Mark and Luke. So this one, especially as it's the very first one he chose to tell, needs us to really pay a close attention to it. Now, in one way, it's like all the miracle stories. Jesus meets a human need, and he comes in with miraculous, with divine intervention. But that's where the similarity ends. Because the need in this case is that the hosts at a wedding party have run out of wine. Now that's embarrassing, it might even be humiliating, but compared with healing the sick or feeding the hungry, the things that Jesus normally did for miracles, more wine for a party seems a bit more like a luxury, doesn't it, rather than a need. So I think this miracle, when Jesus does his miracle, he's not so much supplying a need as he is supplying an extravagance. I think that seems right because he changes the water in six stone water jars which John tells us each holds 20 to 30 gallons. Now, that's 150 gallons of water, isn't it? And if you put it into 75 milliliter bottles of wine, say 900 bottles of wine, that's a huge quantity, which is his wedding contribution far more than the guests could have drunk, even though in those days their weddings went on for several days. So, what's going on? I think the the clue to it comes towards the end when we hear the chief steward's comment. He makes a joke at the host's expense. It's a kind of a punchline. And he points out how silly the host is to leave the best wine until last. Because now as then, I guess, People generally serve the best wine first because once their guests have had a bit to drink, they're unlikely to be quite so discriminating. They probably won't notice the quality of the wine a bit later on. But of course, what this steward doesn't know is that the wine is divine provision. So we can work out in a way that he can't that this wine is a sign of God's abundant generosity. And I think this gift of wine is a sign that God's done a really surprising thing. He saved up the very best till last. He started by giving the Jewish people uh, to Israel. He gave Moses the law and he gave Israel 
the promised land, but he is kept, and then of course the prophets, but he keeps the best wine until the coming of Jesus. I could have said God's best wine is Jesus. He is the gift. And the extravagance of what is given is really important, I think, in this story. Jesus later in the Gospel says, in chapter 10, he says, I'm come that they might have life and they might have it abundantly. I think that's what this is about, it's abundance. So when we think about our everyday lives, let's, let's think about it as an abundant gift. When we think about what we're going to face in the future, our hope of heaven, let's think about that as an extravagant gift. I think that's what John is hinting at at this miracle, that being a Christian isn't about living in a pinched and a careful way. It's not about following a strict set of rules that if we're not good enough, we're going to end up in hell. I don't think it's about that at all. I think being a Christian is about living in glorious and abundant celebration, about that living life in all its fullness, about that I'm come that they might have abundant life. Now, in a way, it's a shame that today is a morning praise service, not Holy Communion, because although we can hardly claim that, <coughs> excuse me, that when you dip a wafer in wine, that's anything like a party, it is a sign, a sign that we share every other week of the bounty of God. It's a sign of how much God loves us, his extravagant love, if you like. But of course, we don't need to be in church to remember that. I think it's a really important aspect of this story that when Jesus turns water into wine, it's a reminder to us that wherever we are, whenever we share food and drink together, as we did yesterday lunchtime here in church, when we share food at home, when we chat with friends in a pub or a party, at all those times we have this, this abundance which is ours to enjoy right now and the plenty, we must remember the plenty, which will be ours when at our lives end we join God in his heavenly banquet. And so I say thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we're going to say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for this day, the third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in our weakness, Sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we pray, loving God, you transformed common water into wine. May our ordinary lives share in you who are divine. And as you have taken on our humanity, Lord, let us share in your divinity. May your church 
reveal your abundant generosity to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thinking of Jesus at a wedding feast, we pray for all those people who are newly wed, for those who are preparing for marriage, for all who are discovering a newness in their love for each other. We pray for those who feel they can't afford to get married and for all those marriages and relationships that have run into difficulties, for those who have, are in debt. We pray for all who feel betrayed in their love and for those who are seeking divorce. Be with those who provide marriage guidance counsel, we pray, and for all who seek to support family life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray that your presence would transform our homes, that they might be places of abundance and generosity, that they might be centers of love and peace. We pray for all those we love, our friends who have <clears throat> transformed our lives by their goodness. And we pray that in our communities we might share and help to meet each other's needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we come to pray for your world, loving God, for areas of darkness and deprivation. We pray most earnestly for the people of Gaza, <clears throat> the Palestinian people, the Israeli people. We pray for the people of Ukraine for those in Russia, for all who are impacted by, by the wars. We pray for the, those involved in the ongoing conflict in Sudan. And we remember all those hungry and thirsty people of our world. In our own country, we come to pray for the work of the social services. All who are struggling to provide support for families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in trouble or in sickness, especially remembering those on our pew notes. We remember those people who God, <clears throat> who God has laid on our hearts, asking that they might know our love and your care and support for them. We pray that the dying may be safely led to the peace and joy of eternal life and that one day we too might experience the fullness of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, we come to pray that <clears throat> we might become increasingly aware of God's amazing love for each of us until our hearts are indeed overflowing with thankfulness and praise. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Would you stand so we can share in the peace? <clears throat> we are the body of Christ. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share that peace with each other. Our offertory hymn this morning is 347. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts we have to offer and for all your goodness to us. We ask that your love surround us, your care protect us, and that we may know your peace at all times. Amen. We say together... <clears throat> The dismissal prayer on the back page of our orders of service. Excuse me. <clears throat> May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our souls. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn 636, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. 